draw the bell, and I want to change the picture for that. Now they appear on that thing. They continue to be functional, but that picture will stop fooling around with. Um, I want to change the bell itself, I want to move them. I go to icon, and each, each bell is an icon, and it's all being brought by the directory of icon, but I want to move it. All I have to do is to press, and I get rid of there. Now, I can do things which, for instance, make me, I can, I can this is the icon I'm, I'm that active right now, and it, Sell it. I test it. I can test it right now. I want it when I touched it to move somewhere else. I can offset it. But I change the parameters here, so it's gone. Now it's moving some some other place. It's not staying on a single plane. I want to change the note. The note comes is the event that accompanies every time that I touch this uh, particular bell. I want to change the sound. Here's the parameter parameters of the sound, and here's the new sound it has. I want to change the pitch. And then I don't know what that took parameter has from it. Now I want to do, let's say, I want to have a color change. So I put that in, I add the color change, and I have four. Let's just make the parameters as they are. I'll see how the color change occurs. I don't think it, I'm not sure it will, because it all depends on whether it's the same. No, because the backdrop does not suggest a color change, but you can have a color change accompanying every time I touch only this, this particular thing. I'll see if, if I can get another picture behind it. Let's try a color change with that, see if it works. Uh, run. Not a very excitable color change. Let's see if I can get something more than that. See now, these are, um, once I've touched an icon, I have all kinds of possibilities. First of all, I, can, I have an initial cell, which is that icon, which I can change into the second cell. And I can call an other brush to become, for the first cell to become a second cell. Then what I can also do is to modify the position of the first cell and modify the position of the second cell as I'm touching the sensitive point. All this commanded by a single point. Then if I use something which I still can't use myself because I'm not being proficient in the program, if I use an actor situation, I can create, let's say, an I add an actor, then um, here is something, here's a, here's a diagram of where each one of the cells, where the cell is going to move once I have synthesized it. So that let's say that I've taken this cell and I start here. And I make it travel across the screen. That's one way of doing animation, which is a quick way of doing animation. Quick and dirty. I hope it will work. I'm not actually sure it will, but who knows. So, you know, I loop it, and I guess I hope that's going to work. I can't, I can't guarantee. It, but we'll see. Yes, it is. See, something is moving across the screen. And why that is moving across the screen, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it did what I wanted to do, but not quite. So, it's okay. ugly. You agree, it's ugly? Should we, uh, it looks like uh, something from Alien. But it's ugly because I don't know how to use it. If, you do, if, you, if you're an artist, which I'm not, and know how to use it, you can do something beautiful with that. And it's like, you see that the color change did come in. So I, had, I, I, I brought onto my single touch of an icon two different functions. One, an animation function, as well as the three, like the sound, which is an initial sound. I can also have an end sound. I can add that. Then I have this movement and a colorization. So there's a lot of events controlled by a single, a single gesture. And you can have as many of these interacting events. And what is most exciting, but I can't do it, 
uh, it is when after let's say this progress moves it hits different other spots which in turn generate their own their own effect so that you can have a sequence of events which will be randomized according to a your own movement with the camera and b all the possibilities that are within uh, within this kind of uh, multiple action for each icon so it can be you know you, it would take a while to really master this technology I think it would take not a very long while but I think within two or three months of, of uh, continuous work at it I never had that chance even to spend two months with it because I you know very very good elsewhere but, and I loved it I mean I'd like to just take a summer and do nothing but that and learn how to do it but I'm shy of it because you know Every time I try to do a graphic art paint uh, on, the, on the screen, I've always found it so objectionable that I couldn't look at it for more the time I made it. But I'm sure that, like I said, if, if, you can, if you know how to deal with graphic arts and you are interested in interactivity, then this is something you can really enjoy. Now, I show you this scene. I show you the actor. The actor is this movement across the screen. The icon, I've shown you at work. The sequence, the sequence is basically a pre-programmed number of events that you can process for each for each icon as they move. The picture I've shown you, the cell. The cell is just a loading the directory of the brushes that you put on and that you have to send to that. Let's say that I, I want to add a cell here. So um, and I will take that one. I win. I go to icon and I want to change that icon. So now I've got a smaller bell. I can turn it to something else. Here the symbol. I can turn it into yet another thing. I mean that musical form, there's a word. You can have words also. You can have you can have words that we write themselves as you go on. Just all kinds of possibilities. Sound the sound system is I want to give to this icon a special sound. So um, I can add as many notes as I want. I'm oh, sorry. Here. So I have now four events which are called notes. The first one, I will test what it sounds like. I only have one note, which is a deep bell sound, okay? I don't want the bell sound. I change it to something else. <coughs> and then the second note, I give it a different sound again. Fourth. I can make a call. Now I can have those, I don't know how to do it myself, but I, I know that it's possible for instance to have those notes in either in arpeggio, in succession, or in chord, all at once. Um, I can also modify... Anybody knows how to use a Roland? A Roland synthesizer? Because even, even that I'm not very good at, but um, you can, of course, whatever sound structure you have there is the one that's commanded in through the MIDI interface with the synthesizer, but you can also manipulate the synthesizer the parameters and, and modify all the sound structures at that level. So, that's pretty well the, the sum of what I can show you directly with the system. Uh, but I can also show you a tape which contains other uses of the system, if you'd like to see.